I hate saying welcome back to my channel, so I'm just not even gonna say it. I guess this is my first hair video since I cut all the blonde off of my hair, as you guys can see. Actually, there's still a little bit left because I was kind of feeling this salt and pepper look, but <laughs> whatever, I'm gonna get rid of it eventually. The new year is 2017, and with each new year comes a new hair regimen, at least for me, because I changed my hair so much, and I'm actually not done changing it. I'm going to make one more change to it. I'm completely done with bleaching my hair, promise. But I am going through another change and I'm not gonna tell you guys what it is. It's gonna be a surprise, but if you want, you can do this poll up here and tell me what you think I might do. Okay, so today I'm gonna be telling you what products I'm keeping in my regimen, what I'm getting rid of, what I'm bringing back, and what I'm adding that's brand new. So let's just jump right into it. Okay, so first, the things that I'm keeping in my regimen, my Aussie Moist, actually Mega Moist Conditioner. <laughs> I'm keeping this because it's still keeping my hair moisturized, still gives me super slip when I co-wash with this in the shower, still makes my curls soft. So, you know, why ruin a good thing? I am also keeping my Shea Moisture JBCO Leave-In Conditioner. And I'm keeping this because this is also still keeping my hair soft, um, really shiny, um, and it makes my hair smell good. This is like the one hair product I use that makes my hair smell really good. It smells like vanilla. Oh my God. And last but not least, I am keeping my olive oil eco sour gel. I know so many naturals hate this, but this is one of my holy grails, okay? Like I've said in the past, this is what made my edges grow, okay? My edges was lacking, all right? My edges was real, real sparse uh, back in 2014. <laughs> and I started using this, and my edges flourished, and they became bountiful and beautiful. And not only do I use this to let my edges down, but I use it to slick my hair yes i slick all of this thick coarse hair flat against my head when i was wearing my wigs i use this to finger coil my hair this is what keeps my finger coils in place so yes this is my love i don't think i'll ever get rid of this so now that you've seen what i'm keeping i'm guessing you can pretty much figure out what i'm getting rid of number one Yes, I'm keeping a leave-in, but I gotta get rid of this Shea Moisture JBCO hair mask. And that is because um, for the past couple of months, actually, um, when I deep conditioned with this overnight, which I've been doing for the past two years, you know, my hair was bleached blonde, this was everything. But now that the blonde is gone, it's leaving my hair extremely dry. I mean, I would deep condition overnight several several hours rinse it in the morning and my hair will feel like that almost like that um that brillo pad feeling when you first go natural when you first do the big chop yeah it's like that except wet so i have to get rid of this also getting rid of both of the shampoos that i've been using for the past year and that is the Giovanni 5050 Balance Hydrating Clarifying Shampoo. And I'm getting rid of this because um, I recently found out that I have high porosity hair. Like I actually sat down and did the porosity test. So I don't need to be using any deep cleansing shampoos like this, like a clarifying shampoo. I know it says it's hydrating too, but it doesn't really hydrate when I use it. It makes my hair feel really dry. And I'm also getting rid of my Shimmer Lights, the purple shampoo, because obviously I don't have blonde hair anymore, so I don't need this to take the brassy tones out of my blonde hair, so this is completely useless to me. And finally, <laughs> I'm getting rid of both of the oils that I've been using, and that is my Sweet Almond Oil and my Grapeseed Oil, which I don't have on me right now, I have no idea where it is, but I've been using these two oils for the past two years since the very first time I bleached my hair blonde and they used to 
you know, be able to seal my hair properly. But lately, I've been feeling like I just need something heavier than these. I was, you know, apprehensive when I first started using them because of the fact that they were so light, but they seem, especially the grapeseed oil, seem to really steal my hair, um, you know, working with the JPCO leave-in, they went really well together. So, you know, I stuck with it, but now it's just time to let them go. And now the fun part. <laughs> so what products am I bringing back into my regimen that I've already used in the past? Well, number one is no surprise. I'm bringing back extra virgin olive oil. This is the heavier oil that I've been needing. This oil always worked wonders for my hair and really the only reason I got rid of it is because this combined with the JVC leave-in had a really bad smell. But honestly, I can get over that if my hair will be nice and soft and sealed and moisturized and shiny, which it will be. So I'm bringing this back. This was also one of my holy grails. I should have never, I should have never left. <laughs> Been a long time. <laughs> now this one, technically, I'm not bringing back because I had the shampoo version of it and I have a conditioner version, but you know, same brand, same smell, same whatever. And that's the <laughs> Organics, Organics Hydrating Tea Tree Mint Conditioner. And the reason I am using this again technically is because I've noticed a pattern with my hair when I would cut all of my hair off like how it is now and how I did in February and when I first did the big chop when I went natural almost five years ago um I noticed that mint really really stimulates my scalp and gets the blood flowing up there and makes my hair grow fast like I really feel like mint is the reason at least you know a huge part of the reason that my hair grows so fast so I just needed some more mint back in my life and I know I was using the what was it the herbal essences naked cleansing conditioner which also has mint in it but that one really really burned my eyes when it would really, like run into my eyes um even when it didn't run to my eyes just if it got close to it really really burned my eyes so i had to get rid of that and the finale what have i added to my hair regimen well the first thing i added was a new shampoo and it was shea Bush's jvc i added this because um when i used it the first time it was very, very moisturizing. And that's the kind of shampoo that I need. Not a clarifying one, but a moisturizing one. And I know it was cleansing my hair still as it was moisturizing it because my curls pop the most when my hair is clean and my curls were so defined while I was using this. But also soft and not rough and like brittle, like clarifying shampoo would do. So I decided to stick with this and I'm adding it to my regimen and it's very, very likely that it will become a staple. The second thing I added to my regimen was Cantu Shea Butter's Leave-In Conditioning Cream. Um, I added this because I felt like, also due to my high porosity hair, that my hair just needed more moisture. And usually I would just use more, more of the same product, but I decided that maybe I should try something new and combine two moisturizing products and see how they work together. And so far, this on top of my leave-in and my extra virgin olive oil is working really well for me. And I'm actually doing the LOC method, the leave-in oil cream method. And this is my cream. And it also smells good. And it covers up the extra virgin olive oil smell that I hated. The nasty smell I would get when I would mix it with my JBCO leave-in. So that's a plus too. And the last thing that I added to my hair regimen is Shea Moisture's Mongongo and Hemp Seed, I hope I said that right, and Hemp Seed Oils High Porosity Moisture Seal Mask. And I think I got this for the obvious reason, <laughs> because of the high porosity. And I've used it twice already, and I, I noticed that the week before when I used the JVCL one, my hair was like a Brillo pad. 